This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. The Cleveland Browns play the Dallas Cowboys in about 18 days. It's about two and a half weeks. So in one hand, that's a lot of time. In another hand, that's not a lot of time. It really depends on what you're talking about. When it comes to healing from injuries, 18 days would be seen as a good amount of time to be able to heal from any injuries that you have on the roster, depending on the severity of them. For example, if the Browns had an 18-day break, from one week to another one. We would talk about that being an area where we can get extremely healthy over the course of the season. I mean, when we talk about during the season, a 10 day break would be amazing. So the Browns having about 18 days to get healthy from an injury standpoint, that's a good amount of time. Um, if we're talking about the Browns being able to be ready from a functional standpoint, right, from how the offense looks and everything else, that's not that much amount of time, right? So on one hand, injuries, you have time to get back from that. On the other hand, when it comes to how the offense looks, you know, you're getting dangerously close to it looking how it's going to look or it being how it's going to be. The issue is that, we haven't really seen the Cleveland Browns offense, at least publicly. Anytime they've put the work in on the offense, it's been behind closed doors um, where there's not a ton of media access and the media access that is there wouldn't illuminate what's going on greatly um, in that situation. So we're kind of flying in a little blind here on what this Browns offense looks like. I think we would all feel better if we had like last year, two preseason games with the starting quarterback and the backup quarterback where we can get a good grip of what this looks like how this feels and what we can anticipate it being during the course of the season that being said we're going to try to approximate where the browns are we're going to try to figure out how dire is their injury situation and get a good grip of where the Browns are 18 days out to the week one opener. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is, is the Browns offense ready? Should we anticipate a slow start? I always lean in the direction of yes, whenever there's a change on the offensive side of the ball, that you're probably going to have a slow start because unlike defense, offense has a little bit more moving parts. So even if everything goes perfectly and with the offensive coordinator change, you're usually talking about two to three weeks to really get things going. The fortunate thing for the Browns is that they don't have that tough of an opening schedule. They could honestly win win four of their five games on strong defensive performances alone um, if those teams are what we project them out to be. So the offense might start slow. It's gonna. We're gonna see where they're at. You know, it's possible that they start a little slow, but Deshaun Watson individually plays well. Um, it's possible that the offense comes out and they they're fine, right, with Deshaun Watson in the range. But I think, and I always like to anticipate a slow start for the offense when we're talking about a new offensive coordinator. The good news on that front is that I think the defense will be ready to go, and we're gonna be talking about a lot of crazy stats with this defense by the time we get to Week Six versus the Philadelphia Eagles because I think they're going to play some teams that aren't offensively great and that's going to allow the defense to accumulate some pretty impressive numbers over that span. Um, during the first few weeks of the season, the Cleveland Browns play outside of Dallas. The Jacksonville Jaguars, who are questionable on offense the new york giants who are without saquon now that they let him go in free agency and very questionable on offense the las vegas raiders and look weird stuff happens when the browns play the raiders but 
Las Vegas Raiders don't project to be a great offense and the Washington Commanders don't project to be a great offense. So I think the Browns will be pretty okay in those games, whether the offense starts slow or not. Week one versus Dallas will be interesting because not everything is going smooth over there in Dallas. Their running back situation doesn't look great. Their offensive line does. Dax in the middle of a contract situation. The same thing can be said for C.D. Lamb. He's holding out. We're not 100% sure if C.D. Lamb will even play in week one if he continues this holdout um but everything's not going great for dallas so there's a chance that they're probably not going to be their best week one which would be good for the browns because the browns probably going to be a little bit slow to start on offense but i think defensively they're going to be right where they left off um and healthy with a healthy squad around them outside of maybe greg newsome and then we'll see what goes on with Denzel Ward after this week. Speaking of injuries, now that we've kind of touched on where the offense and defensive units are, are the injury situation or is the injury situation as bad as it feels like it is? Because it feels like the injury situation is awful. But if we look at who the projected starters are, who's projected to take most of the snaps by week one, it starts to look less bad. Um, offensive line-wise, you know that four of your five starters are pretty much locked in unless something happens during the Sunday, the Saturday preseason game again. Knock on wood. Hope that doesn't come up and pop up. But four of your offensive line starters seem to be pretty set in. You got Wyatt Teller. You got Ethan Polsick. Um, you got Dewan Jones. You got Joe Batonio. If we're wondering about death behind it, guard death, you have Zach Zinter and Michael Dunn behind him. You feel pretty good about that. Center death, you have Nick Harris behind Ethan Polsick. You feel pretty good about that. And then Dewan Jones, potentially you have Jack Conklin that could come in behind him, and you feel pretty good about that. The left tackle situation is a bit more curious. Jed Wills, who did a workout, seems like he's on track to come back soon and might come back as soon as next week. Um, will likely start, and if he comes comes back it gets announced and we'll know there's really no mystery about what's going on at left tackle and then possibly uh jack conklin could be back i don't know if jack's gonna be back week one i don't feel like he's gonna be back week one but he could be back um and he would probably be the swing tackle to support both jones and jed so Offensive line wise, we can be very comfortable with where the Browns are by Monday because Jed Wills gets announced that he's back at practice and all of a sudden you're fully healthy on the offensive line. Hopefully, if nobody gets injured during the preseason game and that's with all of these positions. Um Halfback on the injury stand, you got uh, Naheem Hines and Nick Chubb. Now, Naheem Hines is making some progress towards getting back to the field. He did a supervised workout a couple days ago. So there is a chance that Naheem Hines is back for week one. I said in an earlier video about Nick Chubb, we'll know what Nick Chubb's week one status is by the end of August. And it's looking like Nick Chubb ain't going to be here for week one. Again, if I'm the Browns, I would want Nick Chubb back at least by week seven. Um, I think there's a chance he could be back significantly earlier than that, but I think you can get by without Nick Chubb um, until week seven, and that's when you start to play your divisional opponents. So that's all good there. The David and Joku injury that he had in joint practice, that seems to be pretty cleared up. He's fine. Uh, Jordan Atkins is fine. There's no real injury there. Amari Cooper was already back at practice. Jerry Judy, Elijah Moore, and Cedric Tillman don't have any injuries. And then uh, the... <laughs> David Bell, who did get an injury during joint practice, probably will be back um, and ready to go by week one. Edge room, you're pretty much all healthy in the Browns edge rusher room. So that's all good there. Um, I think Alex Wright does have a minor injury, but it's not serious. Defensive tackle, this Dalvin Tomlinson thing is going on a little longer than I anticipated, but if he probably will be back for week one, it really wouldn't surprise me if he's back for week one. The question with Dalvin Tomlinson though, will be what kind of condition is he gonna be in for week one and how many snaps can he take? Will he have to play himself into shape? We're talking about a 300 plus pounder who has not been able to practice or put pads on all camp. Um, it would be 
wrong to assume that he's just going to get healthy and then play the full amount of snaps. You're probably talking about if he is available week one, which could be the case, it's going to be on a limited snap basis, which means you will have to use more of your depth on the defensive tackle part. Uh, Maurice Hurst had an injury. It seems like he'll be back soon. Um, it wasn't a major injury. I think the one area where you do got a lot of injuries going on and injuries that I can't just kind of wipe away is minor. Is defensive back, and it's interesting. We're not really talking about that one. I think offensive line has taken all the air in the room. But if Jed gets announced back on Monday or before week one, then all of the talk about offensive line injuries starts to fade into the background. I think people will start to focus on defensive back. Now, Greg Newsom has a torn hamstring. The Browns have, last time they talked about it, said that they hope that Nick Newsom could be ready for week one. That's going to be tough. I would be doubtful of that, but you know, I wouldn't put it out the realm of possibility that Greg Newsom can be back for week one. Um, Denzel Ward is a bit more curious because he's been in concussion protocol for about 10 days. We haven't really gotten an update about it. There were some signs that he didn't have a concussion because he was outside in the sunlight pretty quickly after the head injury, but it's been confirmed that he did have a concussion. Um, my concern with Denzel Ward is that he's had about five of these concussions. He's had a lot of these concussions. He's been in concussion protocol a lot in his career. My concern with that is this could be one of those things where it takes a really long time to get back from the concussion because the concussions have taken their toll. See Denzel Ward in an update, a positive update on Denzel Ward, you know, before the end of next week. If you don't hear something, then, you know, it, I would be a little bit more concerned. So that is something there with Denzel. Then both the injuries that they have in that secondary, right? Greg Newsom, Denzel Ward. I think those are pretty serious injuries, right? You're talking about hamstring surgery for Greg Newsom and a concussion for Denzel Ward. Now, if those two aren't able to go week one, it's going to be a little difficult, right? Martin Emerson can hold his own as the number one corner, but we're talking about putting Cam Mitchell out there and possibly what, Miles Harden? Not a great situation to to look at there if you're the Cleveland Browns, but we'll see. It's very possible that by the time I upload this video, we find out Denzel Ward's out of concussion protocol and none of this is nothing to worry about. But the Greg Newsom thing, I don't think Greg Newsom gonna be back for week one. I would be doubtful about that one. Um, so all in all, if we look at the Browns injuries, we knew that Nick Chubb was not likely for week one. It doesn't look like he's going to play in week one. Greg Newsom, that's something that popped up before camp, and he's probably not going to play week one. So that's not really a surprise there. The Denzel Ward stuff, you do want to keep an eye on. Um, the Naheem Hines stuff looks looks good. The Jack Conklin stuff looks good. The Jed Wills stuff, I mean, he worked out last week with a trainer, so you would think he's on the right track. So as far as we know, he's on the right track. And then every other injury seems pretty minor outside of that. So if we're talking about projected starters, it's very possible the Browns are only going to be missing two or three projected starters going into week one, which is not the best, but it's not that bad either. So that's where the Browns look like they're at um, 18 days before week one. And if you're asking me, do I think that a Browns team that is missing Nick Chubb, Greg Newsom, and possibly Denzel Ward could beat the Dallas Cowboys? I would say yes. Um, you know, Dallas is not an impenetrable team. They're dealing with their own issues, as I mentioned earlier um, in this game. And I think the Browns defense is still really good. And I think a lot of what makes the Browns defense really good is their defensive line being able to create pressure. And I think they will be able to do that against a good but young uh, Dallas Cowboys offensive line. So... I'm pretty good with how the Browns look like right now. We'll see what they look like after this preseason game if everybody gets out healthy. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have a better night. Peace.